Is dinner ready? Yes, it's ready. I made pasta today. Okay. I'm coming home with my co-worker. What? From now? Yes. Is there any inconvenience? I didn't make extra portion, so I don't think we'll have enough for dinner. Why don't you just make it now? Don't be rude to your husband's guests. Isn't that a wife's job? I don't think so. Who decided that? Huh? Are you trying to embarrass me in front of my co-worker? I'm taking them with me. They're still single. Don't you want to serve them a proper dinner to make them feel at home? Are you just too selfish to even think about that? You're so mean. What's wrong with you? You sound offensive somehow. If people see our warm home and think it's nice to have a family, you'll be happy and that'll make you work harder, right? There are so many good things about showing our home to others. I know that what you're saying is admirable, but I don't think we need to take care of your co-workers. Don't you think it's natural for me to do that? I'm the one who got married first, so I want to set an example for my co-workers. Anyway, just prepare something simple and get it ready. You're a housewife, so you should be able to do that. You're really rude. I can cook the food, but we don't have any alcoholic beverages. Why don't you go buy some on your way home? You should buy some snacks of your choice too. Are you telling me to go shopping? There's no way I can do something so embarrassing with my co-workers around. I'm leaving work now, so it'll be a little while before I get home. In the meantime, why don't you go shopping? I don't have that much time. I have to clean up the room and cook, okay? You're going to clean the room now? Why now? What were you doing during the day? You're probably just taking a lazy nap anyway. Stop slacking off. I do my housework diligently, but cleaning up for guests is different, isn't it? There are things you don't want them to see. I have to put those things away. That's because you're incompetent, right? Huh? What do you mean? A good housewife always keeps everything in perfect order. I didn't expect you were that useless. Incompetence is a great sin. Hold it right there. Isn't that too rude? You're my wife, right? A wife who embarrasses her husband is incompetent. Okay, I got it. I'm going to the supermarket now. I'll even cook. Are you satisfied with that? You should just be obedient and say so from the beginning. Why did you say you can't do it? You think, if you say you can't do it, I'll do everything to help you? Well, I know that I'm a perfect guy, but you're relying on me too much. Don't depend on me forever. Do it yourself. You're a housewife, for heaven's sake. Yeah, whatever. Please excuse me, since I'm busy. You must entertain my guests. Do I make myself clear? Will you take a look at the bed? I'm going to the bedroom, so just wait for a sec. I forgot the document in the envelope. Is it there? Yes, it's here. Thank God. I took it out of my bag and forgot it just like that. Now bring that to me right away. I need it for a meeting that'll be held in 50 minutes. No kidding. I can't do that. It's too sudden. You say you can't do it right away again. You don't know if you don't try. Why don't you do it right away? Because I have to take a train to get there, right? It'll take more than an hour. There's no way I can make it in time. Hurry up then. I left home and got to the office in 50 minutes. Don't assume from the start that you can't do it. I have to do a lot of preparation before I leave the house. A woman needs time to get ready. What's the matter with you? You're really useless. What an incompetent wife. You're my wife, right? You should always be ready to support your husband. Incompetent, huh? Is that the only word you can say to me? I'm not your servant, nor your housekeeper. I work diligently every day. I support you with the money I earn. How dare you talk back to me? 
Don't talk to me like you're some big shot. Just because you're the breadwinner, it doesn't mean that you can treat me as if I were a slave. Why don't you get the heck out of the house then? If you don't make it to the meeting on time, I will reduce the amount of money I give you from now on, since you're an incompetent wife. That's enough. Anyway, I'm leaving now. Hey, today was your payday, right? Did you get a pay cut this month? The allowance for living expenses is awfully low. It's a penalty for last month, I told you. Huh? What penalty? You couldn't do what I told you. You always said you can't do it right away. And you complained to me about every single thing I said. Are you talking about the document last time? That's right. But there's something else. What else? Looks like you had a bad memory too, huh? You'll never be able to survive in this world with that kind of naive thinking. That's not true. I was working at the company before I quit since I got married to you. I've never had any problems. Also, no one has ever called me incompetent. Then you must have lost your ability to take care of things since you got married. All you do is just taking a nap and cutting corners while doing housework. People degenerate when they're lazy, you know. What does that have to do with the living expenses? What you're saying isn't a reason. You're really stupid. Family is part of society. You don't seem to understand unless I tell you. I'm going to tell you from scratch. So listen to me carefully. I'll only tell you once. Are you preaching to me again? Don't talk to me like that. I'm the boss here because I earned the money. And you're like an employee to me. Anyway, you don't earn money. So employee isn't the right word to describe your position. I think I should describe you as a slave. Huh? A slave? That's too much. Because you're being fed free food, right? A slave's job is to do exactly what the boss orders. If you can't do that job, you can eat, take a bath, and get some sleep. Well, I guess you're just lazing around during the day. What a happy slave. I'm not a slave. You're incompetent since you get angry so easily. Don't you understand metaphor? I'm just trying to make it easy for you to understand. Slave. Incompetent. Those words you told me? Is that what you think of me this time? Then I'll find a job. You told me you wanted me to quit my job when we got married. That's why I became a housewife. If you're going to make fun of me so much, I'll work. How are you going to find a job? I think it's impossible. You've been degenerating by staying at home for years. You can't even take care of your housework, so there's no way you can go back to work outside. That's disrespectful to all the people who are working right now. You don't know that until you try. I worked all my life until I got married. I'm sure that you won't find any job. No matter what other people think, I'm well aware that you're incompetent. Don't forget that if you start working. You'll get yourself into trouble. I don't want to take the responsibility for that. So what am I supposed to do? Am I to remain a slave? A housekeeper? As long as you do what I say and keep me satisfied, it doesn't matter. You are only capable to do simple things. Fine then. I'll think carefully about what to do from now on. That's right. You should have done that from the beginning. You're such a rebel every time. But if you're willing to do it, that's fine. I'm asking you to do your best for me. You should make an effort to make my life comfortable. I just got home from work. Where the heck are you, Mary? Your husband came home, so you must explain why you're not here to welcome him. Hey, stop bothering me, okay? What? Who do you think you're talking to? I've thought it over carefully. I can't stay together with you anymore. Huh? Stop kidding me when I'm tired. What on earth are you talking about? Didn't you notice what's on the floor near the entrance? The floor? 
I didn't want to bother turning on the light, so I just went straight to my room. Then go back and look again. I thought you were about to find out as soon as you got home. What do you mean you didn't even turn on the light? Stop blabbering. Just tell me what's on the floor. What? You'll know it when you see it. Divorce papers. Divorce papers? I'm the one who's paying for your living expenses. How can you do such a thing when you're a slave? What's wrong with you? That's what I'm complaining about. That attitude of looking down on me. That language you use. What? The way you say that you're paying for my living expenses. Slave, housekeeper, incompetent. Those are the words you use toward me all the time. Do you really think that you're some sort of king who rules the world? You don't even get paid that much. You're just an ordinary office worker. Hey, watch your language. Are you making fun of company workers? Just because you're incompetent, it doesn't mean that you can just blame the others. This is why I hate dealing with a stupid woman like you. You haven't changed at all, but feel free to do whatever you want now. I'm sick and tired of your pompous attitude. Let's have a divorce. Pompous attitude? I'm just trying to educate you. I don't need you to teach me anything. I've learned everything I need to know at school and the workplace. I'm not a slave nor a housekeeper. I'm an independent woman. Oh, come on. Adult means you can make your own decisions and act accordingly, right? Do you know what that means? It means you must be able to earn your own money and make your own living. I know that much. Liar. If you knew that, you wouldn't be so lazy. You would be able to listen to what I have to say with an open mind. Here we go again. You and your nonsensical thoughts. I haven't told you this before, but I found a job and I'm already working. Don't be ridiculous. You're just staying at home every day. Everyone has their own way of earning money, and I'm not lazy. Oh, I got it. You're selling your junk to make a few coins, right? I'm sorry, but you can't live on that kind of money. What are you talking about? No, I'm not. Stop making assumptions. It's too much trouble. Don't waste your time resisting. Come back home. I told you I'm not going back. If you insist that much, I understand. You're leaving, aren't you? From now on, I won't give you any allowance at all. Are you sure about that? Of course. Don't keep talking big. What are you talking about? A housekeeper like you should just obey my orders. You don't earn a penny. I don't need your money, so divorce me. Don't be so cocky. Whatever happens later, I won't forgive you. Well, as you wish, I'll file the divorce papers tomorrow morning. Thank you. I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Well then, goodbye. Hey, Mary. What do you want, Judas? Well, I need to talk to you about something. What do you want to talk about? Will you call off our divorce? What? I can't do that. And even if I could, it's impossible. I refuse to do it. You're being very harsh. Oh, really? The electricity and water went out at my house today. I see. The management company told me to move out of the apartment too. But you've been living there for a year, so that's great. The landlord was very kind to you, wasn't he? What do you mean? You were behind on your rent, electricity, and water bills anyway, weren't you? It's only natural that you should be evicted. Evicted? Me? I don't understand. You're a clever company worker, aren't you? Can't you even understand that much? Sorry, I should call the CEO instead. CEO? What do you mean by that? I'm not the CEO. Is that so? I thought our family was a company you owned 
and you were the CEO. That was a long time ago. I didn't contact you to talk about that. I just need your help. Why should I help you? You didn't even know what's going on in your own company. How could you act like the CEO? I can't help but laugh. What? Are you making fun of me? I don't mean to make fun of you. Do you know how much your monthly income is? It's about $3,800 take-home pay. And how much is the rent for the apartment? $1,500. That's right. Last year, you bought an expensive motorcycle on loan, right? How much are your monthly payments? $600 per month. And I received $700 for food and living expenses from you, right? That $700 included the money you should save. $700 for food, daily necessities, entertainment. Do you have any idea how hard it would be to try to save even more? Why don't you try practicing it yourself? Why are you talking so high and mighty? You're just an incompetent woman. Well, okay then. Why don't you keep doing what you do for the rest of your life? I don't care since I'm no longer your wife. Wait a minute. The grand total is still $2,800. Think about all the insurance you've got. Do you have any idea how much you're paying for those? You spent $500 per month on those. Anyway, when you die, there will be no beneficiary. You were the beneficiary at the time. Besides, what about the remaining $500? Don't you understand? Think about it. Internet and cell phones, drinking parties, pocket money. $500 wasn't enough, right? I was saving money, so somehow it was enough. I wonder why. Are you hiding something from me? Huh? How naive can you be? Electricity, water, and gas are not free of charge. You forgot all about that, didn't you? Why didn't you pay them out of the money I gave you? You spent all my money. Hey, how have you been managing your money for the past six months? With me gone, your money must have been floating around more than before, right? How did you end up getting kicked out of the apartment? Have you tried reviewing your finances or something? What are you talking about? You've been secretly spending my money, haven't you? That's the only thing I can think of. Don't be silly. We were living on a shoestring, and I didn't waste a dime of your money. Now you know, don't you? Because you've been spending all your time at home, you're the one who's been living in idleness. You know what's funny? You're divorced, but you can still live on your own. I'm pretty sure you're saving my money somewhere. You've got to be kidding me. I told you I'm not unemployed, right? Huh? Are you working? Even though you were lounging around at home like that? Jeez, looks like you won't understand unless I talk to you from scratch. I'm not gonna listen to you. You're the one who stole my money. You ripped me off. Quit saying that without any proof. You wanted to make yourself look good in front of your parents, right? You took them on spa trips and went shopping with them, didn't you? They're my parents, so it's only natural. What's wrong with being nice to my own parents? You're so silly. What? Your brother is the president of a general contractor. You're just trying to look good and resist, right? There's no way you can resist. Why don't you just be yourself? Shut up. I'm not competing with my elder brother. I even took my parents on a spa trip once in a while. Really? What about the clothes and bike? Why were you so concerned about the luxurious brand of your possessions? You bought a lot of things that didn't deserve to be there. You looked like you were trying too hard. You were living way beyond your means. It's the same for every man. When you get married, you're the lord of the manor. You want to be particular about your possessions. You're just an ordinary office worker. Family is not a company. The head of the household is not the boss. 
You're not even a board member, so you don't have to be so vain. Huh? Are you telling me that my salary wasn't enough? That's right. At last, you understood. No one cares about you. There's absolutely no need to force yourself to look good. You're so rude. What a thing to say. You have no respect for me. You're living off the money you took from me. Don't act like a big shot. I told you I'm not. I earn my own money. If you insist that much, why don't we meet once? Let's meet face to face and discuss. Why should I do that? If you're making your own money, you must have enough income, right? Why don't you come live with me again? Stop kidding me. I can't live with someone who doesn't have any savings and is going to be evicted. Fair enough then. I'm willing to give you some respect from now on. So reconsider the divorce. What did you say? I don't need an incompetent person like you to respect me. You're incompetent, overbearing, and you treat people like some sort of slave or housekeeper. You are a completely unattractive person. There's no way I'm going back to live with someone like that. Don't say that. Your ex-husband is in trouble. Don't you think you should help me? I don't think so. After what you did to me, there's no way I could forgive you. By the way, I managed to get a job on my own, so I have a source of income to live on my own. I got divorced when the time was right. I can't have you interfering with my life anymore. Mary, I'm sorry. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. From now on, I'll do my best to support you. Will you live with me again? I want you to seriously think about it. I've seriously thought about it and it's not possible, okay? I've been married and living with you for a few years. I don't think you'll change your behaviors anytime soon. Well, good luck with your solitude at best. If you need money, why don't you just ask your brilliant brother for help? Hey, don't make fun of me. I won't allow you to make fun of my brother too. Yeah, whatever. Well, I need to leave now. I have no intention of seeing you in the future for the rest of my life. I'll block your number, so don't ever contact me again. Wait, Mary. I want to start over with you. I don't know how I can manage to live alone. Judas couldn't manage the household budget at all. He couldn't even pay the rent. But he was still treating his parents and took them on spa trips. As a result of that, he couldn't keep his head above water and had to liquidate his debts. According to an acquaintance of mine, he was trying to get my contact information so he can start over with me. But no one was willing to grant his wish. I'm so glad that I was able to divorce such a nasty guy. I have always worked in graphic design. I've been working for my former employer and now I'm working from home. Some of my former clients remembered me so I'm taking some orders from them. I'm now making enough money to live on my own. I don't think I will remarry again for the time being. I'm planning to enjoy my single life from now on. Hey, Samantha, we don't have any soy sauce left. I wonder why since you often do a lot of strange mail order shopping. I'm busy receiving packages all the time, you know. If you have time to buy weird stuff, but can't you at least buy soy sauce at the market? You don't seem to understand the priority of things at all. Also, the socks were hanged upside down. The bathroom is also not cleaned well, but I can still see some dark spots at the corner. I told you to clean the bathroom every day, didn't I? Are you trying to make our family sick by having us to use such a dirty bathroom? Last but not least, today's breakfast was disgusting. Please don't make Sean and Simon eat that. Thanks to you, I've been here all morning. I have to make breakfast for us. It's a waste of ingredients and time. Are you listening to me? Answer me. Or would you rather I call you instead? Hello, Matilda. Good morning. I've already started work. I can't look at all these messages you're sending me. 
I'll talk to you during my lunch break. I'm busy, so I'll get back to you later. See you soon. I won't be able to reply from now on. Oh, and thank you for picking up my packages. I have no time to go shopping right now. If it's too much trouble, I'll set up a box in front of the entrance next time. I don't care if you need to get to work or not. That's none of my business. As my son's wife, it's natural for you to listen to what your mother-in-law tells you with the highest priority at all times. You need to be aware of that. You don't make much money, and you call that work? Don't you dare contradict me! I didn't mean to contradict you, but I need to do my job. Sorry, I can't reply to you anymore. Don't you dare to say that you can't do it! Anyway, that's not the point. Starting tomorrow, I want you to think more about what you're going to put on the menu for breakfast. I don't want to eat the same thing day after day. I don't care if you say so, but you prefer a full American breakfast every morning, pancake, grilled sausages, and so on. All of that really takes time to prepare. Do you remember when was the last time I talked about that to you? That was years ago, right? You keep. Repeating the same thing over and over like a broken radio. The breakfast you cooked was awful. If you eat something like that at the beginning of the day, you won't have any energy. You're such a useless wife. Did you say years ago? With all due respect, you told me about that last week. Last week? Are you sure? The meals have the same taste, so I feel as if I were eating those for years. That also means that you're cutting corners. Before you start backtalking me, take a look at yourself to see if you're at fault. You really are irritating. I'll talk to you about the food later. Just come home right now. What? Right now? Yes. You know I have hula dancing class today, right? My husband can't drive because of his back pain. You need to drive me there. I'm going to be late for my lesson if you don't do that quickly. You can't do that, Matilda. I'm at work, and I have an important meeting this afternoon. So please go to the hula class today by yourself. What? You can't listen to your husband's mother even though you're his wife? I have an important hula dance class this afternoon. You know what will happen if you disrupt my schedule, don't you? I'll come home right away if it's a life-threatening emergency. But hula dance is not an emergency. It's a 15-minute walk from our house to the class. Why don't you walk there for the sake of your own health? It would definitely be faster than waiting for me to come back. Fortunately, today is a beautiful sunny day. Now, if you'll excuse me. Oh wait! Listen to me, Samantha. Hey Matilda, seems that you've been making strange calls to my company, haven't you? Will you stop it? What are you talking about? It was you, right? The one who tried to spread rumors that I'm having an affair with my boss. You called my company without mentioning who you are. Oh my! Are you having an affair? I am not. I mean, my boss is a woman and she's married. That's impossible. You don't know that. Nowadays, we value diversity. You know, just because your boss is a woman doesn't mean that she isn't having an affair. Diversity? That's not the point. Anyway, there is no such thing as infidelity. I heard you also said that my hobbies are disgusting and nerdy. That's true, isn't it? You have a weird colored wig in your room, a bunch of lacy, flirty clothes. You've been getting a lot of mail order packages lately, and it's all because of that disgusting hobby of yours. Am I right? I wish you'd stop. It's really annoying. You're right about me being a nerd. I'm not the only one who plays cosplay. It's a shared hobby between Simon and me. We met at a cosplay summit. It's a memory that we both cherish. Please don't make fun of it. I know our hobby might make some people feel uncomfortable. I'm not bothering you or anyone else. I mean, after all, you did call my company, didn't you? Please stop it immediately. What? You're my son's wife, but you don't listen to what I tell you. A wife like that is useless. Besides, I was just trying to tell the company who you really are. You don't have to tell the company about my private life. It's unrelated matter. I'm doing my job well in the company, and I have an important position there. What you've done is really a nuisance to the company, so please stop it at all costs. You're the one who's crazy, Matilda. Don't make a big deal out of this. Are you telling me that you think your company is more important than your family? 
What? How can you say that? You didn't marry Simon, my son. You married the company. You neglect your family and spend all your time at the company. Are you kidding me? There is no such thing as a marriage between a company and a human being. You're talking too much nonsense. I can't keep up with you. If you married my son, normally you'd obey your mother-in-law. But look at you. All you do is talk back to me. I'm sorry, but I can't have you as my son's wife any longer. Hold it right there, Matilda. It's a modern era now. And you still talk to me as if we're living in the year of 1800s or something closer to that. Did you just say that a wife should obey her mother-in-law? Modern people would be horrified to hear that. I thought you were joking, but seems that you were serious. Oh my god, you're making fun of me after all this time. I really can't believe it. That's enough. If you can't follow what I, your mother-in-law, tell you to do, I will have you divorce my son. Do you understand me? I don't think so. I will not divorce Simon. As I said before, nowadays, wives don't obey their mother-in-laws. Are you still going to defy me? I won't forgive you even if you apologize. I'm serious. I brought it out. Thank you. Huh? Matilda, garbage day is Monday, remember? I'm not talking about trash. I think you misunderstood. What kind of things did you bring out then? Divorce papers. You are now divorced from my son. I filed it. That's why you need to get the hell out of my house right now. What? Divorce papers? That's too much of a joke. And it's not funny at all. I'm not joking. I don't like you because you're too cocky. That's why I filed the divorce papers to get rid of you. You can't just file for divorce because you don't like me. Besides, we talked it over at home yesterday. We decided on the rules from now on. Didn't you agree? No, I didn't. I'm not going to abide by rules you made up on your own. I'm not even going to follow them. If I need something, I need to tell you as soon as possible. Or, if I want to go somewhere, I should arrange that on your day off. It's all for your own convenience. Who do you think you are, forcing me to do whatever you want? That's the same line I'd like to say to you. I'm sure you've made a rule to tell me in advance if there's anything I need to know to prevent misunderstandings. Besides, you seem to think that I'm lying, but I'm telling you the truth about filing the divorce papers. Really? Yes, of course. Have I ever lied to you? Yes, you did that a couple times in the past, but I don't think the divorce papers filed on behalf of the related parties would be processed. Filing divorce paper without mutual consent should be invalid. I mean, neither Simon nor I wrote the divorce papers. How did you manage to file those? It's possible because I wrote your part on behalf of you. I asked a friend to write Simon's part. If the handwriting is the same, no one will notice. Thanks to my quick thinking, the officials didn't find out either. Goodness gracious, did you watch too much detective drama? You shouldn't tell such lies and jokes to Simon. He will believe it right away. I'm serious. I made sure I filed this promptly. Really? I'm sure. If you think I'm lying, go and ask the officials. You are no longer my son's wife. Now is not a good time. Anyway, I'll listen to what you have to say when I get back. See you later. Matilda, you're home now, aren't you? Please unlock the front door. And why are my things here? I have some important outfits. Could you please not put them directly on the ground? What if it starts to rain? Oh, you finally came home. You're too late. I left your stuff out of your room since you told me that you're coming home late, including those creepy costumes. Did you go to check with the officials? The office is already closed. In the meantime, please open the door. I don't want to. Only my family is allowed in this house. You're already divorced from my son. You're not a family member anymore, so don't come in the house. If you come in through the windows or the balcony, I will call the police. Is that what you want? If you don't like it, leave now. Enough. This is really not a joke. What do you think you're doing? I've told you so many times. It's because you don't listen to me, your mother-in-law. I told you the reason why, didn't I? Yes, I've heard that many times. You said that it's because you have a job, but this is my house. I created the rules, and what I say is all that matters. But you didn't listen to me at all. A wife like that doesn't deserve to be in my house. If I listened to everything you said, I wouldn't be able to go to work. I wish I could be a housewife, but we just don't have enough money. Without my income, we'd have a hard time making ends meet. That's your excuse. A wife is supposed to take care of the house. You don't need to bother about anything else. 
That golden era is over, Matilda. Unbelievable! You made fun of me again. You're not getting enough money with your work anyway. You're wasting your time working. You commute to work costs more than what your job pays in gasoline. And all you do is make excuses for work. You are a wife who is so absorbed in her work that she neglects her family. You're not a good wife and mother. In the meantime, please take the luggage that's left in front of the entrance. Otherwise, when Simon and my husband come home, they won't be able to enter the house and your stuff will be in the way. If you don't take it with you, I'll make you regret. Come on, hurry up, go away. Wait a minute, I have Sean's school-related matters to take care of. If I lose my income, our family will be in danger. Shut up, I am busy making dinner. Don't contact me again, okay? Bye! Matilda, wait. Samantha, I heard about that. It seems that you were paid very well, weren't you? I'm sorry for treating you badly. I had no idea that you were paying for my hula dancing lessons. I'm really sorry for what I've done. What are you trying to say? You know what, Samantha? Come back home right now. I'll get your marriage certificate tomorrow so you can submit it again. Huh? I mean, you can come back to her house right now. Besides, you want to come back home, right? I forgive you so you can remarry Simon again. No, thank you. What did you say? I said I don't want to do that. Sean is waiting too. I know it's because he is still in elementary school. He must be worried if his mother doesn't come home until late at night. So, come home then. I'm not going back to your house. The three of us and you will be living separately from now on. What? Separately? Simon didn't say anything about that. Since it seems that you've forgotten that, let me tell you again. Simon doesn't say anything when he's angry. He just leaves without saying a word, just like his father. Simon knows what you told me, too, and what the company did to me. He said that he'll protect me. He also said that if I just put up with him a little more, we'd be able to live in peace. I told him not to make things worse. Sean is still in elementary school. Simon wanted us to live together with you so that I could go to work without worrying. My son was loved and cared for. I tried to help as much as I could, but you got carried away and went too far. You can't stop Simon no matter how much you say he's your son. Hey! While I was talking to you, they are gone. They were in the house just now. When I went upstairs, their stuff was almost gone. Why? I told you we're going to live together as a family. That's not true. Where is my son? Sean is my grandchild. Give him back. It's true that Sean is your grandson, but he's my son. Oh no! You didn't notice, did you, that we've been preparing to move out from a while ago? What? Moving out? Wait a minute, what do you mean? Simon told you about my income, didn't he? I'm in a good position at the company now, and I'll get a promotion at the next personal meeting. Promotion? Yes, that's right. The money you love so much that you can just change your mind quickly to get that. I'm going to get more money than I've ever got before. Well then, I think you should come home. A promotion means you'll be busier than ever, right? I can take care of Simon and Sean and do the housework too. Housework? You said housework is a wife's job until now. You've done nothing but gardening as a hobby. Besides, my new workplace will be changed to a place far away from your house. I won't be able to commute from that house. If I try to commute, it will cost me a lot of money for gasoline. So from now on, the three of us will do our best. Oh no, I didn't know about that. I didn't tell you because I didn't know what you would do to me. It's understandable that you don't know. This has been our plan from the beginning to keep you away from our family. You don't understand properly. You talk about our family of three as if you can afford it. You and my son are already divorced. Why do you think you can take them with you? I'm not forcing them to come with me. Both of them decided to live together with me by their own violation. Besides, a divorce decree without my and Simon's will is invalid, and you just filed those on your own. That makes you guilty of forgery for a sealed private document. I haven't reported it yet, but if I do, you'll be arrested. What? That's- And about Simon, when he found out about my relationship with you, he said he'll do his best to support me and he's been looking for a new job ever since. What? So I'm changing my job to a different job that offers me better benefits than I have now. We're going to buy a condo and live near my new company. I will get a promotion and Simon will get a salary increase so we can live much better than we do now. 
I can't believe that my son is leaving this house. Why? Doesn't he care about his mother? Simon was always fed up with your attitude towards me. He was very angry about that today. He couldn't believe that his mother was such an embarrassing person. And your lovely grandson, Sean. He said he doesn't like a grandmother who is mean to his mother. So we are all happy to be separated from you. Oh, and we've got your husband's permission too. What? My husband knew about that and didn't stop you? Yes, he said he and his wife would talk it over after we left. Wait, let's talk it over first, okay? You ignored my phone calls when I said that. Please don't do that. What am I going to do now? Who's going to do the housework? Who will take me to and from hula dancing classes? And who's going to support our family's finances? The entertainment, expenses, and clothes? I don't know. Don't ask me. I mean, the money I was giving you for the rent was used for that kind of thing? I didn't know that. I think our family will be able to live a better life now that we are wasting less money. You are the one who should divorce your husband. Why don't you divorce him and get married to your precious money? Your husband was very angry. Even if you don't want to, he will divorce you for sure. Then... Wait a sec! Samantha, where are you now? You'll let me see Simon and Sean from now on, right? Samantha, are you still there? The next day, Matilda stormed into the company. Due to the previous nuisance phone calls, the company was on the warpath. She was turned away. We were very lucky to have a boss and co-workers who understood our situation. Now that Simon has told his father what happened, under his father's strict supervision, Matilda started working as a cleaner at the inn. She has been neglecting the housework that she used to leave to her daughter-in-law. My father-in-law said that his wife has been giving him a hard time. With the help of the company and my father-in-law, we have been able to live happily in our new place without letting my mother-in-law know where we are. I am relieved to be free from my mother-in-law's sarcasm and meanness, and my family's finances are much easier now that I can spend less money on useless things. Actually, I have accepted Simon's suggestion about my mother. So my mother, who used to live alone, has come to live with us. She is very excited to have a new family member, and my housework load has also been reduced. I am so grateful for the cooperation of my husband and children. I will be able to concentrate on my work from now on. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.